So when I'm looking at you there, like, first thing I want to talk about is, like, picking on a bass. Because it's completely... I used to be a guitar player. You used to be... You are yeah. still a guitar player. When you moved to bass, what... Did you stay with that same style of picking you were doing? Or was there any tweaks that you made to it? And obviously, some of that riff you're doing alternate picking, some you're only doing down picking as well, like... Yeah, so I guess my picking, my picking technique is very similar in terms of how I'm holding the pick. But moving to bass is a few considerations. One, the strings being further apart. Yeah. So you've got more ground to cover there. And then the big one for me really is there's so much more aggression in how I play bass than when I play guitar. Guitar would sound really horrible if you picked it this hard. But yeah. These basses are kind of set up to just keep giving back more and more springiness as you dig in. And really, I want every hit to sound almost like a slapped note. Yeah. So when I'm picking... I do this on guitar to some extent, but way more on bass. I'm really picking down into the string. I'm kind of dead rest stroking against the next string as like a mute. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So you're actually playing right, you're not like plucking the string, you're playing through the string. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And without doing that, like I've, I've worked with plenty of, uh, of bassists who perhaps are newer to picking and they're kind of plucking like this. Yeah. But there's two things that instantly present themselves as problems. One is, you can't get the aggressive sound, which for some people, I guess, doesn't matter. But the other huge one is is tuning. I find that if you pick a string, kind of, you get this huge, like, ooh. Yeah, sound. yeah. Whereas if you go the other way, if you, essentially, I'm kind of using this in, in place of my thumb to slap. Yeah. So the string is ricocheting off the fret, so you get that really metallic attack. But I, my theory is that that also limits the range of motion of the string, so it doesn't kind of, Ooh. yeah, it doesn't go really sharp <laughs> yeah, you and get that thing, in. yeah. And um, so that's a huge part of of how to be able to play bass aggressively without having tuning nightmares. Can you give the guys just sort of like maybe just a few notes quite slowly on one note yeah. so they can see that through the string thing? Yeah, give the guys a, yeah. a shot of doing that. So I'll do it on this string. Yeah. yeah. Right through, isn't it? Yeah. And when you're, is that for when you do a downstroke? Because obviously, at some point, the you're not going to be able to physically do that depending on the actual speed of the line. Would that be correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But when that happens, what do what's the what's the next thing that you go to? Yeah, that that is the tricky thing. Um, to some extent, well, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of sawing in and out of the guitar as I start to play runs that involve upstrokes and downstrokes. I'm kind of rotating my wrist to some degree to pick either flatter to the strings or to actually kind of change this into an, a reverse. Like it doesn't ever go quite as far as that. Yeah. But something to prevent it just becoming... Which sounds really ugly. Yeah. You hear that. Um, and that is, that is kind of tricky. So for that reason, when I can, I will down pick because it sounds really consistent when you do that. Is that why you do it? Is that why that down pick's there? Because of the consistency of sound, or when you switch to the alternate, it's because down picking is just impossible within that line that you're actually trying to do, yeah. Yeah. Although sometimes that's, it can be a little bit too aggressive. You know, sometimes you don't actually want every single picked note to be completely audible, like a kind of hammer. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking if you're just playing constant, like, I don't know. You still wanted to have attack, but I also wanted to have a kind of rolling feel to it. So I'm not, I'm not going to be going like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want the accents possibly in different places as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of um, the way you strike the string as well, is it flat on or is it at an angle? I know earlier we were talking about Devon Townsend sometimes like angles his, doesn't it, to get that behind the beat kind of feel? Yeah. Kind of crunchy feel. Do you do that on bass or not? Um. Or does it depend? <laughs> well, I think that the truth is I definitely try and pick a bit flatter than I pick on guitar. Yeah. Because otherwise you tend to get a lot of like, like if you're ultimate. Yeah, you're like, that's yeah. not what you want. But if you look at the wear on my pick, it's definitely still got a kind of diagonal. So clearly it's not completely flat. And that would kind of necessitate this. To yeah, do doing anyway. that, wouldn't it? Yeah. But a bit of flatness for me gives you a better kind of note release as well. Yeah. So. That kind of behind the beat thing, I feel does happen, but that's partly just due to the, the aggression of the picking. Yeah. You kind of, your, your initial point where the pick hits the string is actually just 
displacing the string and the pick and string are kind of stuck together for a second. Yeah. And then it flicks away. So and you then get that little yeah, yeah, yeah. spike. Should we hear the riff at half speed and then we can actually talk about the the tricky parts of this riff. So uh, yeah, let's let's hear it at half speed. All right. Something I should mention is I don't play with thick picks. Oh, absolutely. So this is something right, which is yeah. quite interesting. This is um this is a 0. 0.6 mil. There's a few reasons for that. One is because it would actually start to really take a toll on my wrist just from the Playing impact coming back. The string. Yeah. I think it would mash the strings far too much. It wouldn't sound good to my to my ears. Yeah. And another really neat benefit is it kind of almost acts like a compressor. There is a limited amount of headroom to this pick because after not very much force, it's just bending more and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that gives you a little bit of extra consistency. Because yeah. if I pick a bit too hard on one pick, it's going to flex a little bit more. And so the output is not going to be, you know. Yeah. If I pick double as hard, it's not going to come out double as loud, if that makes sense. So yeah. It really helps for both consistency between pick notes on a single string and also going through the strings, which is really important because this string would sound horrible. The high strings would sound terrible with a really thick pick. They would Absolutely. just get completely yeah, yeah, mashed. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas with this, I can still maintain the same aggression. Like I'm not, I'm not changing how hard I'm picking on any of the strings. I'm just going. Yeah. And uh, it comes out sounding very even as a result. And if you listen to Nolly on any of the records that he's done, or just hear, you'll hear that his tone is like super consistent. Is that something that you've worked on and being always aware of, like wanting that consistent tone across the range? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of like we were discussing before, like the the bass needs to be present on every single note. And if you don't play it consistently, you won't have the consistency of tone. Yes, you can compress it and limit it and do whatever after the fact. But if the actual input notes have an inconsistent timbre, it's never going to cut through the mix equally on every note. So yeah. when I'm recording something for real for, for a studio album, I will go sometimes bar by bar or even, le like even less if something's really tricky. Yeah. And I will even just visually look at the waveforms and be like, oh yeah, I picked a few notes too soft in that, so I'm going to do that again. Sometimes you wonder if it's necessary, but that's, that's the perfectionist. Yeah, yeah, Essentially, yeah. I wanted to be as close to a MIDI instrument as possible. Like, yeah. My idea of being successful at, at uh, you know, playing bass on a track is it should sound just like a perfectly edited, perfectly in time, perfectly in tune instrument. Yeah. yeah. 